What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are finally gonna review the Platamons by Mon Acoustics. Now I reviewed their smaller model, the Super Mon Mini. I love that speaker. It was $2,000 for the pair. The only other speaker the company made was the Supermon, which was $25,000 a pair. And I really felt like this company needed an in-between model. And here we go. We finally have an in-between model now. The cool thing is they're closer in price to the Supermon Mini. Um, and look, I'll, I'll say this just to, just to start it off right. If you're looking for one of the better deals in high-end audio, this is it. This, this is a phenomenal deal for high-end speakers. Um, it really is. What you get, the whole package, incredible. Billet aluminum cabinets, drivers made in Germany, tweeters designed by Monacoustics made in the USA. You get stands included, and you get performance that is above something like a Focal Canton number no. 1 for much less money. These are $6,500 a pair. The Canton number no. 1s, here in the US, they're eight grand a pair. And if you want stands, it's an additional 1500 bucks. So if you buy Canton number ones, even if you get a thousand dollar discount from your dealer, you're still in at 8,500 bucks. These clock in $2,000 cheaper and do everything better. Look, look at me. They do everything better. We're gonna talk about it. Let me throw those main specs on screen so you guys can check that out. I'm gonna tell you about some stand-up features that I think are cool. I'll tell you what the speakers sound like. Um, I'll tell you how they paired with amplifiers and things like that. We'll talk about break-in. I'll tell you if there's anything I didn't like. Um, I'll be honest, there's nothing I didn't like, just straight up, so I'm not going to tell you anything because there was nothing. Um, I'll tell you how they compare to some other speakers and we'll wrap up the video. So first let me say this, Mon Acoustics is an interesting company. I met the gentleman who owns the brand at Expona and we, we couldn't talk a whole lot, there's a bit of a language barrier, he's from South Korea, um, but, but really nice guy, he, he was showing me pictures of his home and his room and his system, it was incredible stuff. And it was fairly obvious that this man was very well-to-do. And it almost seemed like what's going on here is this is a man who's at the tail end of his career. He's done very well for himself. And he's decided to start a speaker company just for fun, just because he likes it. And the reason I say that is for the for the price and what you get, you just, you'd expect them to be sold manufactured direct so there could at least be some good profit in it. No, there, there's a dealer in between still. Um, and you're still paying $6,500 a pair, which is, it's crazy. It doesn't make sense. Um, so I thought that was interesting, but again, really nice guy and really seems to be absolutely obsessive with recreating the human voice in a way that conveys an emotional, like reaction from the listener in a way that is big and real and sounds amazing. And we'll get into more of that when we talk about listening impressions, but let me tell you about the standout feature. So uh, billet aluminum cabinets, absolutely beautiful machine work. They come in black or silver, as well as custom colors that are available upon request. I saw a pair that were ordered in a custom blue. Holy moly, that was an insanely good looking pair of speakers. The drivers being made in Germany, the tweeter being made in the USA, I think that's a standout feature, I like that. The stands being included, I think is a standout feature. I wanna see more brands do that, especially when you spend a lot of money. Seriously, seriously. It, 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 I get frustrated sometimes because like for a while I was in the market for a pair of high-end speakers and that's when I ended up buying the, the Canta number ones. I looked at the Sopras, I was looking at the Focal Diablo Utopia Evos. Guys, the Utopia Evos are over 20 grand a pair and the stands are an additional $2,000. It's almost like a little greedy, you know what I mean? It really is. I feel like once you're like, well north of $5,000, hey look, I'll be easy on the other companies. North of $10,000, I think stands should be included in the price, I really do. Stands are not that expensive to make like these, these get, some of these guys are charging. Anyways, enough about that rant. You guys know, Nemo Propaganda, you always get some kind of rant over here. I can't stay on topic. Okay, love that the stands are included. Also, really cool isolation system between the speaker and the stands. There's like these stainless steel balls and these like these dimples machined into the base of the stand and into the, the bottom of the speaker. And it's and it's almost like, um like you know, like when a building is on rollers when there's a little bit of an earthquake, it just kind of moves a little bit. I guess if you're not in California, you don't know what I'm talking about, but like, look at this. Like if you just, like you can see the speaker just kind of wiggles a little bit. The funny thing is when I first saw this, I was like, God, I wonder if that's like good for bass. You know what I mean? Bass is very good, very tight. Don't worry about it. Whatever they did to design the speaker, they knew what they were doing and it's incredible stuff. Um, 
Other standout features, this is maybe not standout, but I felt like it was unique. There is a left and right speaker specifically because of the way the ports are oriented and you wanna make sure you set them up properly. Let me tell you what they sound like though. Um, look, the treble region, absolutely phenomenal. You're, you are gonna wanna make sure you give this speaker time to break in initially. When I first set them up, they blew my socks off immediately. I got that wow experience, okay? And um, I loved that, but I noticed towards like the hour and a half mark, I was like, ooh, a little bit too much of a good thing, right? I let them break in, break in, break in, tons of different amplifiers, so on and so forth. And you know, around 80 plus hours or so, things started to change. And eventually it got to the point where I could use my Kinky Studio preamp and mono blocks, which are um, uh, a little bit cool in the mid range, a little bit forward in the treble. And if a speaker has a little bit too much trouble going on, it's maybe not the best match, but it was a beautiful match because the tweeter broke in and reached a level of refinement that I was not accept expecting. I was able to listen as loud as 95 decibels comfortably enjoyably and i don't listen that loud generally and what's going on here is we've got so much refinement from top to bottom this whole speaker that you can listen way louder than you usually do and it is so nice on your ears still and i learned that that's an important aspect of high-end audio many years ago i was about 18 years 18 years old walked into a dealer showroom at shelly stereo in the san fernando valley the guy knew i couldn't afford anything in that store but he could tell i loved audio so he did a little demo for me the system was around fifty thousand dollars and it didn't seem like it was too loud me being an 18 year old punk who thought i was a tough guy i was like this ain't loud it needs to be louder and i went to open my mouth to ask him if he could turn up the volume and i couldn't hear my own words i couldn't hear my own voice and the dude just smiled and then he turned down the volume and said, were you surprised you couldn't hear yourself? And I said, yeah, I didn't realize it was that loud. And he's like, yeah, that's what proper high end is all about. Um, when a speaker is truly excellent and paired with excellent equipment, um, you can turn it up way louder than you normally would. And it's still extremely enjoyable. It's still very easy on the ears. It's light on the ears. And that's what I consider true refinement. The Platamon absolutely has it. Now we're talking about how loud they can play. Let me tell you, um, they don't just have to be loud. This is a very sensitive speaker and sensitive speakers generally are low volume champions. The Platamon is an absolute low volume champion, as little as 70 dB and it still sings incredibly well. Beautiful dynamics, great mid range, great bass response still. So whether you're a very low volume listener or you like it at neck breaking volumes, the Platamon can handle both without any issues. Ultimately, I'll tell you this about the treble. It is absolutely fantastic. And this was the first area that I really started to think or realize, I should say, how much better it was than the Canta number one. Because as much as I liked the Canta number one, there were times where I felt like the treble felt a little bit like too much. It was good. There was a lot of detail there, but sometimes I felt like it was like all the detail was almost at the same volume in a way that made it sound artificial. Um, and I didn't think that at the time. It's only now that I've heard the platinum on and I, it's so much better in that treble, so much more natural with how resolving it is. It displays all that detail and information to you, but there's still like peaks and valleys in a way that makes it sound so much more natural that when I go back to the Canta number one, now I'm like, oh, this treble sounds artificial by direct comparison. So again, I'm not knocking the Canta, but the Platamon does have better treble by quite a bit. Separation was also on another level. Let's talk about the mid-range because that separation is there too and it's it, they go together. Hear me out. So what the Platamon could do with the human voice is absolutely incredible. The Supermon Mini was very good with the human voice also, so no surprise there. But what's most impressive is the sense of scale, the depth, the air, the space around the singer, the way you could hear the changes in the human voice, the vocal inflections, when a singer's carrying a powerful note, those slight oscillations that happen in the vocal cords, you could hear that in a way that sounds so effortless, so real, so beautiful, so big in the room, and without taking away from any other aspect of the presentation. The treble is still there, sparkling nice with its good detail retrieval. The bass is still there. The guitar is still there. The drums are still there. All the information is still there. It doesn't dominate the presentation. 
And that's one of the most amazing things about the speaker from top to bottom. The separation is absolute, absolutely incredible. And I think it's these combinations of being excellent at these things that make it so good because you can have a ton of detail retrieval, but if you don't have that separation between everything that's right, it's not gonna sound good. If you have too much separation, it might sound artificial. Sometimes when a speaker's too expansive in the mid-range, too detailed in the mid-range, it's almost like you're like, I can literally hear the recording studio, and you don't want that, yet you still want a great expansive mid-range. That's another thing I like about the Platamont, how expansive everything is. So look, whether it was male, females, vo uh, or fem male or female vocals, it didn't seem to matter. Both were absolutely incredible. It was expansive, clean, and clear. It didn't lean warm. It didn't lean cool. I would say it was mostly natural sounding in the mid-range. Moving down to the bass, it's very linear, strong, and confident, yet it's never overdone. Some people may listen to the Platamon and feel it has enough bass. Other people like me are going to add a subwoofer to pretty much everything. I found uh, the best subwoofers to pair would be something like Rel's TX range, something like a JL Audio E-sub, or just about anything by Rhythmic. Those are the subs I like the most. So that's what the speaker sounds like. Um, from top to bottom, overall, absolutely phenomenal. Um, let me tell you how it compares to the Focal Canta number one overall. I'll tell you this, Jay's Iagi was down here. Uh, he had some business in my area and he hit me up and was like, yo, I'm gonna be in your area. And I was like, cool, we should grab lunch. So we did, wet Korean barbecue. And while we were having Korean barbecue, he said, hey, what do you think about the Platamons? You've had them for a while. You haven't reviewed them yet. Uh, and I was like, yeah, cause I've had these for four and a half months now. Uh, and uh, I thought about it and I looked at him and I said, they're what I expected my Focal Canta number ones to be. And he snapped his finger like that and went, exactly. He knew exactly what I was talking about. And what I mean by that is this. The Focal Canta number one's a great speaker, but it never gave me that wow experience. It never really blew my socks off. I never felt like, yes, this is $8,000 worth of sound. I just figured like, hey, maybe you gotta spend more to get that. That's not the case because the Platamon absolutely do it. It's this simple. The top end of the Platamon is a lot better than the Canta number one. It's a similar sound, but the Platamon gives you more refinement and better separation overall. It gives you a better sense of distance and it sounds more natural. Whereas the Canta number one, by direct comparison, can sound a little bit forced or artificial. Look, in a vacuum, the Canta number one's just fine. But when you directly compare it to the Platamon, it's easy to see the Platamon's treble simply is more refined and takes the easy win. Moving down to the mid-range, the Focal Canta number one's mid-range can lean a little cooler dry at times, that is the Focal house sound. The Platamon is much more natural sounding in the mid-range and takes the easy win again. It is far more expansive, has better separation, and what it can do with the human voice is on a big step up, a big other level. I don't know, how would you say that? It's on another, it's better, like it's just better. Uh, the Canta number one's no slouch in the mid-range with what it could do with the human voice. It's, it's also very good, but the Platamon does it better. There's more depth. There's more height to the sound stage. There's more width. The speakers extend beyond themselves more. The human voice sounds realer. You could hear the inflections better. It's just better overall. Moving down to the bass, the speakers are a little bit more different. Um, the Canta number one has a little bit of a rise in the mid bass region where the Platamon is gonna be a little bit more linear. Both speakers have good, strong, confident bass that's fairly quick and articulate. Um, I, I would say the bass is a wash. I don't think one's better than the other necessarily. The Platamon's maybe just a little bit more confident, I would say. Um, and look, that's the comparison, you know what I mean? Uh, there are more expensive speakers I've listened to, like the Franco Serblin Accordo. I reviewed those recently. Those were $15,000 a pair. Absolutely beautiful speakers, not cheap by any means. Those do come with stands as well, hats off to them. Um, how do these compare? Well, I'll say this. The Platamon and the Franco Serblin Accordo, in terms of like sound quality, they're both top tier speakers, despite the fact that the Platamon is less than half the price. But the sound is totally different. They sound completely different from one another, so comparison almost doesn't even make sense. I'll leave you with this. The Franco Serblin Accordo is gonna be more on the warm side of things, where the Platamon is gonna be more detail focused, clarity focused, fast, dynamic, and so on. 
right? So I don't think anyone would ever cross shop the two, nor should you. If you're cross shopping the two, I, I think you don't know enough about your own taste. You should probably do a dealer demo if possible. Let's talk about real quick what you can expect coming from a cheaper speaker. Um, let's use something like the Heco Salon Revolution 3. I love that speaker. I think it's the best speaker you could buy around 1100 bucks. I literally don't think there's anything better. I don't think there's anything even close. Um, moving up to something like the Platamon, um, obviously you're gonna get way nicer cabinet, cabinet work. Again, all aluminum cabinet, you generally just don't see that under $10,000. You generally see this from like Magico and their bookshelf speakers are not this price. I think they're like 12K. I, I could be wrong, I don't know. If anyone knows, leave a comment. Uh, the Heco Salon Revolution 3 is a fantastic speaker. Um, it has uh, good clarity in the treble. The Platamon has just tremendously more. It is more effortless. It is more detailed. It is more natural sounding. It uh, has more resolution overall. It images better, it stages larger. The mid-range is more natural sounding. The human voice projects more, is larger, um, has a more of a sense of realism to it, has more detail to it, whether it's nuanced detail or major detail. Moving down to the bass, um, of course the Platamon is gonna have much higher bass quality, better note to note distinction, so on and so forth. Pretty much everything you love about sound, if you're coming from something that's like one, two or $3,000 and you step up to the Platamons, it's gonna be a substantial difference, guys. Let's talk about amplification before we wrap up this video. Um, most amplifiers I used sounded fantastic. I wouldn't use something that's like $500. I wouldn't use like an IOTA VX SA3. The Platamon is resolving enough where it will show you that that amp is just not up to the task. However, do rejoice because there are some very affordable amps, comparatively, of course, that can still drive the Platamons extremely well. The most affordable amp I'd recommend for the Platamons would be something like the new Kinky Studio Choco e -May. That's under $1,700, and it makes these bad boys sing beautifully well. Very, very nice combination. Um, you wanna spend a little bit more money, you got your Hegel H190, fantastic pairing. The Thomas & Stereo Galleon TS120 Special Edition, if you want just a little bit more sharpness in that treble region, a little bit more bass even, a little bit more organic presentation, more three-dimensional, the Galleon's gonna be a good fit. And of course, my Kinky Studio reference system uh, was a great fit. And, and, and the funny thing is, before break-in, it wasn't. Before break-in, I wouldn't use my Kinky Studio. After break-in, it was a fantastic match. And again, that's because that tweeter is so refined. The, the whole finished product is just so refined. Um, so yeah, amplification, as long as it's good quality amplification, I don't think you'll have a hard time. The speaker doesn't really need a lot of power. Um, it can play, again, like I said, very softly, very quietly, and still sound fantastic. And you can play it really loud too. At the end of the day, I like the speaker a lot. There's nothing I don't like about the speaker. It is a speaker I would consider buying for myself, and that is something I am considering. Whether or not I actually pull the trigger, I couldn't tell you because there's a lot of things I want to buy and I don't because, look, being a reviewer, if I bought everything I liked, this room would be full. I, 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 I wouldn't even be able to listen to music down here because it'd have so much gear in it. But we'll see. We'll see. Let's see. Did I leave anything out? This YouTube channel does have a free Discord if you want to talk to your fellow audiophiles about audio. Um, you can also ask questions in the YouTube comments below. If you did like this video or find it useful, press like. It helps the algorithm if you didn't know that. I think that wraps up the video, guys. Like I said, if you got any questions, ask below. Until, until next time, later.